All right. And finally today on the show, the total defeats of Boko Haram insurgency may be near, but has not yet happened. The show of Bruno Abubakar Ibn Umar Gabai has urged Vice President Shatima to use his office to salvage two local government areas from the grip of remnant Boko Haram insurgents. TVC News' Jesse Tafida has more on the story. The 13-year-old Boko Haram insurgency in Borno State has dealt ruthlessly with people and social economic activities of the state. Thousands have been killed and millions displaced due to the conflict. But as peace gradually returns, life is back to most parts of the state. Thanks to the government and military for helping out. This has resulted in not only people enjoying relative peace, but many insurgents surrendering to the military. But the state paramount royal father is worried that remnants of insurgents remain active in two local council areas. He makes his case to Vice President Kashim Shetima when he paid him a courtesy visit at his palace. I also urge on your excellence to ensure the restoration of some of our communities that were displaced by Boko Haram, especially the communities of Abadam and Guzamala. These people are seriously suffering. They need government assistance. The VP is concerned about this. He assured that this will soon be a thing of the past as the Tinubu administration is poised to bring peace and good life to people of the country. Your Royal Highness, all the issues raised will be adequately addressed. Honestly, Your Royal Highness, I have seen the soul of President Ola Ahmed Tinubu. Wallahi, 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 he has a clean soul. And he is determined to change the pace of this country. With this commitment made by the federal government, residents of the state now have a sigh of relief that soon Borno State will reclaim its last glory as the home of peace. Jesse Tafida, TVC News, Maiduguri. Those who should know, because we, all this why we felt that um, at least Borno State is mean, totally liberated or at the verge of being liberated from the enclave, uh, the clutch of Boko Haram. They are now saying, the Vice President, now please come and help us, the former governor of that place, that there's still some areas to look at government, particularly under the stronghold of this terrorist. Well, I'm, I'm happy that. Um, one of the fathers of the state, or even for me, I believe that the, the Shew mm. is um, the father of the state, has um, come out to tell us this. I'm happy on one side that he has said it, but on the other side, I'm also not happy that these people have um, gained a foothold in that place. So, now that we know, we can only keep appealing to the military that got us from about 19 local governments under Boko Haram to two to please perform the same magic that they did with the others with these two. But no needs to be free because when we look at it, that state is strategic to Nigeria. It's a border. It's a gateway to other countries. It's also a major food producing state. You can't run away from that, especially rice. So we need every part of that state to be free so that farmers can return to the farm. People can even walk freely. Some people are still in IDP camps. It's not everybody who has been moved out back to their communities. We need every area to be free. And that appeal goes to the military. They still have a lot to do in 
around it. Okay. Yeah, uh, of course, without, uh, without being told, uh, the Vice President should know that a scourge that has persisted for over 10 years mm. must be dealt with with Very stubborn. immediate alarm. Mm. Yes, so that it doesn't morph into other things. Uh, look at the Sahel, the Sahel region dealing with different kinds of terrorist groups having to contend with so much Mali, Burkina Faso, even Niger, having to contend with these groups. So the earlier Boko Haram and Iswap can be done, put in, in, in the dustbin of history, the better. Because it's also affecting food security. It's affecting a lot of people. A lot of people have been displaced. A lot, the, the, the state governor, Zunum, continues to give succor to the people, keeps giving money and all of that. But the people need to get on with their lives. Mm. They cannot just, re, you know, Blind stay on home handouts on, government. Hand for government they need to go on work. They need to be peace. These people are farmers. These people are fishermen. These people are very industrious. So they need to get their lives back. Mm. And I think whatever, it, whatever can be done to make sure that that, that Bornu state, that those two local governments mm. are finally liberated mm. and the people can return to their villages, to their communities mm. in safety. It must be done. It should be, it should be top priority mm. so that people will have confidence that if they have such issues, government will step in and deal with them decisively. Thank you. You're in Bono State, you want to give us a feel of what those people told the Vice President and what's the situation like in those two local governments? Yes, I, I was in the palace of the show of Bono when uh, uh, he made that demand. I, I, I didn't see that coming. I know that Guzamala local government has been in the hands of Boko Haram for so long, there is not a single Nigerian soldier in mm. that local government. Uh, some time ago, Nigerian soldiers were attacked in that local government, and more than 100 of them were killed in one day. Mm. There is still an epitaph in honor of those soldiers with their names listed, you know? And uh, there was a time that former governor, Ashim Shetima, uh, built um, a lodge, a big lodge in that local government. They set everything in place. Mm. After that, soldiers have not been deployed there at all. That is the hometown of the deputy, I mean, of the speaker of the state, uh, Abdul Karim Lawan. Mm. And it's, it's painful to him that his local government it's still under continues siege. to be in the hands of Boko Haram. The other local government I talked about, Abadam. Abadam uh, with Malam Fatoui as its uh, headquarters is a border town with Niger Republic. Mm. It was in Malam Fatoui that the great tank commander, mm. Abu Ali, was yes, killed yes. by Boko Haram mm. you know, in 2016. In 2016. We have soldiers now We've kept soldiers and a good number of uh, main battle tanks in Malafatori. But the bulk of Malafatori, nearly every part of Malafatori, civilians can stay in them because of these boys. Kukawa local government is one of the biggest local governments in Bono State. The local government headquarters, Boko Haram and the citizens uh, have meshed together, making it even difficult for military operation to take place. Because those boys have been there for long and they are not prepared to leave. So it's not even two local governments where we have issues. There are places where it's only the local government headquarters that is safe enough for people to live in. Mm. In other communities, the boys are roaming around, and if you are lucky, you step out, mm. you could be killed. Look at Monguno, for example. Monguno yes. is a border town with Chad, the extreme end of the state. It is only Monguno town where you find people living. If you stray carelessly 
out of Manguno town. We've seen IDPs because Manguno has one of the uh, holds one of the biggest IDP clubs in the state. We've seen IDPs who strayed out of the camp to fetch firewood and they were slaughtered by Boko Haram. So this is a situation in which only one local, uh, only one town in an entire local government is safe for habitation. I've said it before that Zulum town is a town in Manguno local government. That's the hometown, the the, the hometown of uh, the governor. That's where his, his father comes from. Nobody has lived in the town since 2014. So we have made tremendous progress uh, against Boko Haram. But I'm not the sort of person who come here and say that uh, all is who. And what the Shehu said is just a reminder to us that, come on, despite all that we have done, we can't deny that the entire job has not been done. We praise the military for the sacrifice, for, for laying down their lives to keep every one of us safe. But we still have a job to do. I don't know when Uzamala will be freed from Boko Haram uh, occupation because leaving the town, leaving the local government to death, while they are traditional rulers, they are district heads, are all hiding in the state capital. It's not, it's not an ideal situation. We've got to find an, uh, a way to put an end to the nonsense. The local government doesn't belong to them. So they have to be resisted. They have to be challenged. And uh, you remember the former chief of defense staff was boasting that there is no local government that Boko Haram controls. And the speaker was angry. The Bono State speaker came out and said, come on, you don't have a single soldier in Guzamala. And you are here telling Nigerians that uh, there is no local government that Boko Haram controls. Provide evidence that your troops are in, in Guzamala. Mm. So I think we've left Guzamala uh, for too long in the hands of these guys. We've left uh, most parts of uh, Kukawa in their hands. We've left most parts of uh, Abadam in their hands. And I think the time has come for us to show these guys who is the boss. We have to take the battle to them. Okay. Uh, this is the time to do it. We can't allow them to hibernate for too long in those places. Hmm. That will be the final stretch of that battle. Yes, it will be. Now, because if those I, two local governments I, are in, yes, yes, we, then we are done. But I think, um, like Miku said, and like I said earlier, we should commend the military. This is um, yes. not a Chief normal... Yes, not a normal, not a normal war. Mm. It's an, but Algeria did that is mm. <laughs> But I, 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 I just, yeah. you know, Algeria did, did but no, nobody has done it totally, completely. Of course. You but, cannot. No, we, we, we must it's always there. The ideology is always there. We must commend the, you know, the Nigerian military. Mm. The, I mean, what the, the sacrifices they made in this number of years that Boko Haram and Iswap have mm. ravaged. Mm. The Northeast, honestly, they deserve. Well, thank God that it has not escalated more than this. Yeah. Yes. Because if you see the way these Islamic states are funding this terrorist group, no, the Ragnar no, but, group but you see them, they, 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 went to, they, they moved to the North Central. Yes. And they also infiltrated some parts of the, of the South. But the pushback from the Nigerian mm. armed forces has really mm. been commendable. And I right. hope, mm. yes, we will, victory will, be, uh, will yeah. be attained one day. Okay, and that's our package for today on Journalist Hangout on Sunday. Join us for our regular episode of the program tomorrow by 5 p.m. I want to thank you, Dotu Oladipo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oladipo. Thank you for having me. Oladipo. And Emika Madunago, thank you. Thank you very much. For your intervention. And Jide, thank you all the way from Medjugorje in Borno State. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> well, YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. See you tomorrow by 5 p.m.